State Buckeyes in those classic buckets, taking the ice against the visiting Wisconsin Badgers in game two of this two-game Big Ten series here in Columbus. So glad to be with you again. Colby Cohen and John Butchergrass here in Columbus, Ohio. And Colby, Columbus uh, kind of near and dear to your NHL heart a bit. Yeah, it was the last place I played before the Avs sent me packing, so I remember this city well. <laughs> Your last NHL game, of course, won a national championship for Boston University. Well, last night was game one of this series, Colby, and boy, how about the Ohio State Buckeyes? Four first period goals, Westland and Trelor, a goal and an assist each. Yeah, a team that's really still searching for their identity, talking to Coach Steve Rollick, and when you come out and you're able to get four goals early with traffic at the net, making it difficult on a high-flying Wisconsin team, that is the kind of start you are looking for if you're Ohio State. And Travis Trelor, one of Steve Rollick's four centers. His centers are from Ukraine, Trelor's from Norway, a Swede, and the strange land of Michigan is the <laughs> other center for Steve Rollick and the Ohio State Buckeyes. Meanwhile, Cole Caulfield is a first-round absolute sniper, Montreal Canadian property for Wisconsin. Yes, sniper is the word. This guy, Cole Caulfield, he does not need a lot of space out there. So at all times, if you're a defenseman, you got to know where he is because he can take times where you forget it. He gets behind you. He doesn't need a lot of space, and he can really hurt you with that shot, Butchie. Wisconsin really shorthanded. They need him to have a big night. Well, Roddy Baydoon chased last night. Cameron Rowe came in. He's the goalie tonight for Wisconsin. And look at that save percentage for Ohio State's Tommy Napier. He's been stout in net. And there is the Buckeye goaltender on top of his crease. 37 saves last night, and we are set to go as the Badgers are going to go with Cameron Rowe tonight, Colby Cohen. A freshman getting his first start of the season. He came in and relieved last night, and then two periods without letting up a goal, Butchie. Right, he just showed you those four first period goals by the Buckeyes. That chased Robbie Baydoon, and that brought in Rowe. He was perfect the rest of the way, so Tony Granato gets him the start here in Columbus. There's Tyler Inamoto. Sends it up, and there come the Buckeyes as the Badgers certainly want to prevent a four-goal first period again and uh, kind of carry off the momentum from those final two periods. Quinn Preston playing catch there with teammate Mark Cherimetta, number 17. As the Buckeyes send it in deep, Rowe tries to stop it, but he can't quite get it. And the Badgers get it out the other way. There's the man we talked about, Cole Caulfield, number eight, dangerous shooter. Towards the net in front, but broken up nicely there and sent to the corner by Dominic Vidoli, number nine, the Buckeye defenseman. Pinching on the right wing, Vorlicki, nice leave. Caulfield's opened up, and the shot goes towards Napier, who makes the nice save off the shot. That was Linus Weisbach with the shot from the point. Badgers, this is a big line. Here comes Caulfield, loses control, goes behind that, throws it in front. A couple good stick check plays there by the Buckeyes as that puck was in danger for a second. Back comes Ohio State, save as Rowe takes a look at the puck there off the backhanded shot attempt. Back to the point he comes. Watch out for Gabriel, number 65. He is dangerous. A goal in three straight games for number 65. Cycled back behind the net. Buckeyes threatening. Regula with it. Wrist shot. Saved by Rowe, then out of danger there by Mike Vorlicki, the Badger defenseman, who now has the puck again, and here comes Wisconsin. It's a good wrist shot, Butchie. You're not winding up. There's a lot of traffic around the net. You know you need to get it through quick, and that's a nice heads-up shot by Regula. Long shift for Caulfield. He finally comes off the ice now, so a fresh line out for the Badgers as Rowe will catch, and he will hold on. So again, C.J. Regula, the right-handed shooting defenseman. Yeah, he enters the lineup, and that's what you're looking for out of a guy who's been in and out a little bit. You're looking for him to get the puck on the net, try to create second chances. They had four goals in the first period yesterday, so right now they're looking to test this goaltender. They want to get traffic on him, and they do not want to give him an easy start. Quick shot saved by Rowe. Nice snapshot by Sam Stang or make that Colin Peters of the Buckeyes. There's Gabriel now, throws it in front, traffic, puck loose, back the other way. Here comes Jack Gorniak, loses control though, and Gabriel has it back. He plays with it, almost turns it over, but back there supporting him is Colin Peters. The winger brings it up, real nice pass up to Patrick Guzzo. Around the net it goes. And the Badgers with a nice clean breakout. 
Back the other way they go. Jack Gorniak plastered across the sideboards in front of the Buckeye bench. Gorniak, he can fly. Tony Granato said he's their most improved guy this year, but he can really get going and he can use that speed down the wall. He'll be effective for Wisconsin. Good stick check from behind Quinn Preston. Watch out for number 16 in scarlet and gray and white. Regula back out there, number 65. It's his own teammate, Mark Cherimetta, as the starting line's back out there for the Buckeyes that started this game. Back they come. Here come the Badgers now trying to create something. Defenseman Josh S. who will sometimes play forward, you were saying, of Colby before the game. Yeah, they'll jump him up into forward. He's a real simple two-way defenseman. Makes a good first pass, gets pucks at the net. He's reliable for Wisconsin and for Tony Granato. Good pace to this game. Both teams skating well up and down. No grade A chances yet as the, the boys look like they have some legs tonight. 5.30 start here in Columbus, Ohio. Rowe, oh, it's his side of his own net. So the puck comes to the Buckeyes now who are pressing Singleton looking for help. Shot from the point is blocked and the Badgers have some numbers. Weisbach, nice tape to tape pass. Snapshot just wide of Napier. As Brock Caulfield, Cole's brother, who centers the line out there with Weisbach and Caulfield. There's Cole Caulfield, drops it in, taken by the Buckeyes. Weisbach will set up, and back come the Badgers. Jesper Pelton in. Doesn't like that hit, thought it was a bit late. And the Badgers will change. Four and a half minutes in. John Butchergrass and Colby Cohen here in Columbus. Unlike Penn State, where we saw some family members in the seats, that's not the case here at Ohio State. Hopefully they're watching mom and dad on ESPNU tonight. Wrist shot blocked there. As both teams can't quite seem to penetrate the middle of the ice, Colby, to get that really good shot on goal. Well, defense is actually an emphasis, both of these teams. And that one's going to roll off of his stick back into the net. But something Tony Granato has emphasized, it's defense for the Wisconsin Badgers. And so far, their goalie, Cameron Rowe, so good as Tony Granato and the Badgers looking for a win tonight. Welcome back to Columbus. Already the fifth season for Tony Granato in Madison, Colby. Yeah, it seems like yesterday he was on the bench in Pittsburgh going at it with Peter Laviolette <laughs> against the Philadelphia Flyers. And he's done a nice job here. And there's Steve Rollick, the head coach for Ohio State, who actually played and went to Wisconsin, was teammates, national champions with Marco Siki, who's the associate head coach. It's a mouthful, Butchie, but there's a lot of connections between these two teams. Yeah, Rollick was the captain of that 1990 Badger National Championship team. Now he's here in Columbus doing an excellent job with this program. Yeah, frozen, he, frozen four back in 2018. He's built up a contender. Every year you know what you're going to get. There is an identity that Ohio State plays with, and it is something he has put into the culture here, and they've kept up with it. Pelton and back out there, lob wedge into the zone, high in the air. And Gorniak is in there to get it, pass in front, Caulfield shot, blocked in front by Grant Gabriel, the defenseman. Caulfield back out there, off of the TV timeout. Off the crossbar and in! Ho, ho, ho! Bar down, hands up, mama cries. The Badgers are on the scoreboard first from distance, Colby. It's 1-0. Well, there's not many places on the ice that Cole Caulfield is scared to shoot the puck from. And when he gets moving, he is not afraid to shoot. A great screen in front by his brother, Brock Caulfield. And that one has eyes, Butchie. But there's a reason goal scorers score those goals. They're not afraid to shoot it. They don't dust it off. They notice there's traffic. He shoots around the traffic. The goaltender can't see it. And that's what Wisconsin's looking for early in this game. You don't see many 65-foot wrist shot bar downs. And that's, like you said, the first round draft pick talent. And he gives the Badgers a one nothing lead. This is Caulfield's 46th NCAA college hockey game, his 46th point. 
He's got 25 goals now in 46 games. And that, you know, that, you're talking about a 40-goal pace over an NHL 82-game season. Yeah, and he's shooting around the screen. His head is up there to notice where that opening is. And I don't think that's a mistake or luck that that one finds the back of the net. Now six goals in 10 games this year for number eight for the Badgers. So the all-important first goal last night, absolutely blitzkrieg for four goals in the first period was Wisconsin, down 4 nothing after one period. But now they get the first goal of the night as the Buckeyes come in now. Tate Singleton looking for help, keeps possession, fans on one pass attempt, and here come the Badgers. They got some numbers the other way. Here they come, Jason Doogie. Along the board, still has it, Doogie looking, and Gabriel gets it out of danger, and the Buckeyes take it over, Ryan O'Connell, his defensive partner, passes it up, looking for the tip dump in, Michael Gildon can't quite get it, puck around the blue line, here come the Buckeyes, they got numbers late, shot saved by Rowe, almost handcuffed him. as coming around down that left wing was Michael Gildon, the freshman from Plano, Texas. Yeah, and this one's a good play, Butchie, because it's the quickness. You see the pass go off to the wall, and then he doesn't dust it off. It's right at the net. That's what you talked about. The goaltender has a hard time. He fights it off, Ro, but that was not a routine save because of the quickness of the shot. Anytime you're able to redirect the puck with that type of velocity, it's going to be trouble. Cherimata walking in. Good defensive play in front of the net by Ty Emerson. Good experience with this pair, Emerson and Inamoto for Wisconsin. Whenever it was a defensive zone face-off for the Badgers, they'll try to get that pair out there. Good size, good experience. Our line's been dropping the pucks tonight on our face-offs. Jonathan Morrison and Nicholas Bradshaw. They'll be dropping the biscuit on all the face-offs you see here tonight on ESPNU. Big Ten hockey on ESPNU. The Badgers scoring first on Cole Caulfield's goal. Here in Columbus, Colin Crawford and Fred DeRosiers are the referees. And Robbie Baydoon, graduate transfer, They're, they've been looking for stability in net. Colby, who's been good for most of the year, but last night chased after four first period genos. Yeah, and I don't think that was his fault. There was a lot of good goals scored last night. There was a lot of traffic in front, a lot of rebounds. and. You know, sometimes it's not your night, but when your backup goaltender and Cameron Rowe, who's a freshman, comes in, you gotta give him the start. So look for Wisconsin to go back to Badoon at some point in the next week or the next couple of games, but they'll need him, and, and you nailed it on the head. They're looking for that consistency. He comes over from Michigan Tech, and now he's a Wisconsin Badger. Yeah, played three years in Tech, USHL hockey for the Fargo Force and the Waterloo Blackhawks. Face off to the left of Cameron Rowe, who's in here tonight for Robbie Baydoon. Behind the net it comes. Ryan Donovan's out there for the Badgers. But once again, Grant Gabriel passing up to Colin Peters. Here comes Eugene Fadiov, the center from Ukraine, but taken away nicely there by Mike Vorlicki. Here come the Badgers back up. Again, good pace for both teams. Backhand pass in front, Inamoto shot. Beautiful stick work there, sends that puck up into the netting. Good job there by the Buckeyes. Hey, Sunday afternoon, we'll have a college basketball triple header featuring three top 20 teams. Villanova, Texas, tip off the day at noon. Then crosstown shootout rivalry, Xavier, Cincinnati, always good. And then at 5 Eastern, Kentucky takes on Georgia Tech in Atlanta. All three games on ESPN. And, of course, the app. Face off in the Buckeye end. Tate Singleton out there to get it out. Camille Sadalocha, number 11. Looking for room, nice cross-ice pass. Wrist shot high and wide. Excellent chance there for the Buckeyes, but sails over the net and row and out of danger. Back comes Caulfield. He is dancing tonight, feeling really good after the Vidoli shot went over the net. Badgers in Caulfield's line with his brother. And number nine, Linus Weisbach out there. Whistle blows. Again, just a, a big-time sniper talent is Cole Caulfield, number eight, only 5'7", 165. 
But again, he just has an NHL shot already. And his skating looks to improve. Mm -hmm. Through the first few shifts that I've seen him out here. Last year, we called these games yes. for these same two teams. In Madison. And the skating wasn't quite where the shot is. To me, his skating looks more fluid. It looks more powerful. And that comes with maturity. And that comes with strength. And this guy's going to be a heck of an NHLer one day, Butchie. Mm. And that could be next year. Good to see him at least play two years. Can never really play one too many years of college hockey. It just, just gets you ready for the pro level. Just so good, glad he's here to be able to play hockey. Guys who turn pro aren't even playing hockey. Keandre Miller, he's a guy that left after his second year, and he's waiting for right. just about everything that we're waiting for to see with the NHL. Yeah, the kids that stayed now are really glad they stayed. Maybe a couple of the ones who didn't kind of wish they were still here, at least playing some hockey with the uncertain future. Approaching the midway point here through the first period. Back come the Buckeyes looking to tie this thing up. Trelor tried to center. Nice play by Wisconsin. Playing a really good defensive game thus far. Yeah, keeping everything to the outside. They're giving Ohio State room down the walls. They're letting them play with the puck, but they're doing a nice job of shutting things down in the middle. And anytime Ohio State has had an opportunity, there's been a lot of bodies in the way doing a nice job in front of Cameron Rowe. to get it. James Marooney, number two, sophomore from Chaska, Minnesota. He's out there with his partner, Grant Gabriel. He's been really good lately, Butch. He's scored mm -hmm. in his last couple of games. He's really feeling it as Cameron Rowe brings this one in. Just under 10 minutes left here in the first. one nothing Badgers. Certainly love when your blue liners can help the offense. Grant Gabriel, the only Buckeye defenseman playing tonight who has a goal this year. He's got one in the last three games. Yeah, when you're feeling it, you're feeling it. And he's doing a nice job of picking his spots. There he jumps in off the point. And understanding the timing of these plays is what's important. A lot of times defensemen get a little too excited, and then they run themselves out of space. But with Gabriel's game right now, he's finding those spots. The puck is coming to him, and he's got a very powerful Powerful shot. So he's a guy we'll keep an eye on throughout the night. He'll be jumping in and out of the offense. He'll look to make plays on the power play, and he's an important guy back there for Ohio State. He's a senior, so this is it. So you know, every game he's going to play like it's his last, and he's had a nice little career here. He's 6'2, 197, not drafted, so he's one of those guys with a bit of a chip on his shoulder. If he wants to give pro hockey a shot, certainly wants to get some scouts' attention this year, and so far he has. Oh, and he'll get the looks, but you. Right handed shot like Absolutely. you. Absolutely. Good size. That one-timer we saw on that goal, I mean, that, that's not an easy shot to make. Back come the Buckeyes now. Again, the Badgers watch out now. But a moment like that, when there's a chance for Ohio State, perhaps to have a nice chance, but there, the puck goes off of the stick. That was James Marooney, the defenseman, pinching to try to make something happen. And that, that part of the ice appears to be open so far. We have seen some defensemen, Colby, right by the Big Ten logo there. There's some space here to get a pass and step in and do something with it. Yeah, Wisconsin doing a nice job of outnumbering the puck on the walls. When we watched this team play last year, we saw a lot of individual defensive plays happening. It wasn't a cohesive Let's face it, you were between the benches. <laughs> and you saw some stuff and heard some stuff. That's a, that's a young team. Yeah, they absolutely. need to grow up a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And you can just feel there's better vibes around this team right now. They've lost a couple games in a row, but they are missing a lot of very talented players right now. Dylan Holloway is at Team Canada's camp. They're missing a couple of guys due to injury, due to COVID. So right now, Wisconsin playing shorthanded. They don't even have a full lineup. No, Bushy. 17 skaters. You're allowed to have 19. They only have 17. And they're missing important guys. You're not talking about guys who play in the bottom of your lineup. You're talking about impactful players. So, you know, they're playing well for what they have right now. No Roman Ashano. I love to watch him play. He just goes crazy out there. Shot in front, just wide on the redirection. Excellent chance there. Said Locha was right on the doorstep. He almost tapped in that rebound goal. That shot wide of Rowe. Now come the Buckeyes trying to make something happen. There's Said Locha again. But here come the Badgers. Skating out of trouble. Weisbach. Oh, softly dump it in. Defenseman Emerson in to get to that puck first. Caulfield back out there. Good effort there using his body. Oh, big hit along the sideboards. 
felt there by Jason Doogie. He's fearless out there, though, Butchie. <laughs> he plays at 100 miles an hour at all times, Jason Doogie. I mean, he usually has five or six hits a game. He's running into players, running into the boards. He's getting in on the four check. Brother transferring to Arizona State this year, playing his college hockey there. They got Notre Dame tonight. Here's Preston, number 16. He's dangerous. Number 16 and White sends it back to the point. There's Regula. Regula, D to D. Shot saved by Rowe again with that chest. Quick chest. Anthony Kerr had the shot. I make that Ryan O'Connell had that shot on goal for the Buckeyes. Regula thought about pinching, and then he came back and a nifty chip high off the glass by Matthew St. Default. Hard hit there by Vorlicki. Good job. We're seeing already we've seen more hits than we saw the entire Penn State and Michigan game the other night. Yeah, and Vorlicki, he's a guy who plays a really solid game back there, but I think he still has more to give. He's been real good for this team at times, and I think they're looking for him to step up with some of the absence. Terramena, a quick shot. Rowe really seems to be fighting everything, and here's that play at the doorstep, Colby. Number 11, Camille Sedlocha almost tapped it in. Yeah, watch how he uses his skates there right at the end. The puck is rolling. It comes to him. Oh. That's a good play right there. His stick is right in front of his skate. You'll see goal scorers at every level use your skate as an anchor. When that puck is rolling, it gives you a more favorable bounce, and that one almost worked out for him. Mm -hmm. Inamoto will try to carry it out, but loses the puck. Brad Marchand does that so well. When he knows a pass is coming into his skate, he puts his stick directly in front of his skate. It's just an anchor. Mm -hmm. You're not using your skate to score. You're just using it as an anchor. We saw Jimmy Dow do it the other night yep. in the Penn State game. Dow scored last night, part of Penn State's first win, 9-5 to five last night. They beat Michigan, and Dow got his first college hockey goal of his uh, career, which should be a good one. He's going to be a good college hockey player. We said it would be a track meet. We yeah. were just off by, we were <laughs> we off were. by a night. We missed the first, uh, the second track meet, 14-goal game. Buckeyes shot row, and he, almost all of his saves have been like that. It's like he's doing crunches along the beach, you know, working on the abs. It's, everything is just corrals everything right to the stomach but so far so good he's made every save he's had to make and that's the eighth shot for the Buckeyes he stopped all eight Wisconsin with five shots on goal one went in via Cole Caulfield's sixth goal of the year in this his tenth game and yep. there's Rowe. Both of these coaches are going to be telling their teams the same thing guys we need to get inside the box right now we're too peripheral we saw the goal by Caulfield but right. that was on the outside mm -hmm. but you need the chances from in tight. Here come the Badgers with numbers toe drag but nice job there by Gabriel to pick the pocket of Matthew de St. Foul. Badger still with it. Wrist shot saved by Napier on the hard wrist shot from Ryder Donovan. Got a lot on that one. That was about the same spot that Caulfield scored. Well, this is the last chance for Wisconsin. You see the little toe drag, but oh. a good stick by C.J. Rajula to stay with it. He almost gets beat, but I got to tell you, as a former defenseman, almost getting beat doesn't count. There's plenty of times where you need that stick, you defend with it, you poke that puck away, but if you're Ohio State, Butchie, that's where you have the opportunity to then get going and get going on a rush. Home team gets the last change. Steve Rollick looked out and saw the Caulfield line out there, so he made an adjustment and put the line out there that he wanted against that big line. That's Preston, Trelor, and Cherimetta. And there's Preston with the puck now. Pass in front, but no Buckeyes there. And back the other way comes Weisbach. He's got good wheels. You see him use them here. Around the side, grabbing a stick. Throws it across to Cole Caulfield, but excellent defensive play as they were trying to get number eight. Another good look. Preston looking to dance. Backhander just goes wide. Kept in. Preston with it. But good stick work by the Badgers. And Anthony Kerr. And they got it again. Watch Caulfield. Really up on his toes in this game. Going through the entire Buckeye defense, but can't quite get all the way through. And here comes Tate Singleton with it. He'll turn away and head back up the ice. Five minutes left in this opening frame. Shot. Good stick work there. Here comes Wisconsin. Up and down we go. It's Caulfield towards the end of his shift. Not much left. He'll throw a distant wrist shot again on Tommy Napier, who makes the glove save. 4.49 left. The goal score right there. Cole Caulfield 
Got his second career hat trick last week against Penn State. Got 10 points in his first 10 games. Yeah, and you'll take this if you're the Ohio State Buckeyes. The best ways to defend Cole Caulfield, A, make him defend. Mm -hmm. That's the easy one because he doesn't really want to. He wants to play offense. He wants to play with the puck. But if you can't make him defend, you want to get him on an island, Butchie. Isolate him. Make him go one on two. Make him go one on three. He'll be frustrated. He'll be trying to do too much because if it's a one on one, he's going to burn you and he can beat you with his shot from out high. CJ Regula, number 65, falls down, but falls down and is offside. So the faceoff will come outside the zone here in Columbus. Again, that is Cameron Rowe in net tonight for Wisconsin. In for Robbie Bay Dune, who gave up the first period barrage last night. All four. Rowe was perfect. And Tony Granado gives him his second bit of action of the year. Team is good in front of him. He's seen every shot. And the Badgers have a 1 0 lead. Regula sends it in. Got a lot of ice time tonight. Called his name a lot. Buckeyes now working it. Sedlocha walks in front. Rowe takes along the ice. The mosh pit in front. Down the ice goes Singleton, but here's Regula. Shot blocked. Singleton turns, blocked again, and the Badgers get out of trouble. And with numbers the other way, a bit of a three on two. Good back check by Ohio State. Shot. In fact, there's a pass across by Gorniak. Collision in front of Napier. No call coming. Play continues. Gordiak picks it up. Leaves it for Vorlicki. Off wing. Nice drop pass. Shot saved by Napier. As Gorniak came in the play. So some crazy action there in front of both cages. Bodies hitting the floor. Napier a bit shooken up on that one as there was a big collision at the crease. But again, nothing called from the defender, the offensive player, as there's the collision. Yeah, things really starting to open up here. We're seeing this up and down action. And there's the collision in front with Napier. And he looks like he's OK. He's got his position back in front of the net. But the up and down hockey, that probably favors Wisconsin. So you've got to make sure you don't turn the puck over. Westlin had a turnover there, Butchie, at his own blue line. That's an uncharacteristic play for their best forward. You can't give Wisconsin free chances. Steve Miller, the uh, Ohio State assistant, was screaming for a, a goaltending interference there. It looked like he would just plowed into him, lost his edge, but that looked like it maybe should have been a little goaltender interference. Steve Miller, they call him Killer. He'll be on the U.S. World Junior uh, USA bench with Nate Lehman, the former Providence assistant. Save in front by Napier. He's won just about everywhere he's been, Steve mm -hmm. Miller. At Denver, he's got a couple of championships. I know him from back when I was recruited to play there. And he's a guy who's very well respected in the game of hockey, the NCAA level, the NHL level. Very well liked and respected amongst the hockey people. For sure. There he is right there. He runs the defense for Ohio State. He's great on face-off plays, design plays. He's really almost like a savant. He just really watches the game analytically and sees a lot of things. And that's why he's become such a valuable assistant coach. And a great job by Rollick to get him here in Columbus after he won that national championship for the Friars when they beat Jack Eichel and the Boston University Terriers. Yeah, all the assistant coaches in this game are all capable head no coaches. I mean, there is a lot of star power behind these two benches and that's great for these programs shot blocked I've often said there, there's too many good coaches for as many teams as there are yeah, like absolutely. you said JB Bittner's an excellent assistant coach for Ohio State shot save as Napier again we mentioned his excellent year and it is continuing mentioned Marco Siki and Mark Strobel as well. He'll work with the forwards, Mark Strobel. And he's a no-nonsense type of guy. One <laughs> yeah. of my favorite people he's the to parent. talk with. The oh, tough parent on that staff. When we get to chat with the coaches, obviously not this year. It's a little different. It's via Zoom. But last year when we were in that building, one of my favorite guys to talk hockey with. Because you're right. He's old school. He's no-nonsense. And he tells you like it is. I'd have loved to have played for guys like that. Producer John Gordon had us talk about Travis Trelor before the game. He's six out of seven on faceoff, so he's doing a great job in the dots for the Ohio State Buckeyes. The great Rich Pazinski is our director tonight for this Ohio State Wisconsin matchup on ESPNU. John Butchergoss and Colby Cohn. We love doing Big Ten hockey on ESPNU. We were in Penn State two nights ago and now here in Ohio's capital city of Columbus. Badgers up 1 0 on Cole Caulfield's bar down. Wrist shot from the Big Ten logo you see right there. It was the other Big Ten logo, but that's how far the wrist shot went. It was far down and right into the net. 
And the Badgers have the 1-0 lead here with 2.15 to go in the first. Ohio State 2-3 and three on the year. Badgers 4-5, and five, so both teams would love to get 500. As that's an easy save by Cameron Rowe off the backhand attempt. Again, both these programs will finish up next weekend. And then, as we mentioned the other night in Penn State, teams don't know when their next game is. The schedule basically ends for Tony Granado and the other Big Ten schools. Next weekend, they will finish up the first half. Steve Rollock also would love to get to 500. As the Buckeyes, after this matchup, they'll play Notre Dame a couple times. They actually have four games left after this one. Ohio State, they'll play two with Notre Dame and then two with Arizona State. Wisconsin just will have two with uh, Michigan State next week. So they're done after next weekend against Sparty. Just under two minutes left now here in the first. Not a lot of great A chances for either team. They're playing pretty good defensive hockey. Chances like that occasionally, but just quite haven't been able to connect in those high danger areas. Just good details so mm -hmm. far. A lot of good stick play, a lot of good body positioning. That one looks like it's offside. Yeah, yeah the refs are going to call it. But those are the signs of well-coached teams, Butchie. The good stick, you've got guys who have good body positioning, so you're not seeing those leaky plays where guys are getting behind you in the defensive zone. So I think right now what you're seeing from Wisconsin is a team that's tightened things up because they know their backup goaltender is in, and a lot of times you tighten things up. You don't take that extra chance until you build that that chemistry and that confidence in your goaltender. Leighton Ahaka, Las Vegas draft pick number four in white, trying to get out of the corner. Preston chips it high off the glass. And back to get it is number 21, Ty Emerson. Where's the C for the Badgers? That's always quite an honor for anyone who grows up being a Wisconsin fan to wear a C, play in Madison, not better things in college hockey much more than that. There's the one minute left in the period call here in Columbus at the Value City Arena. As the Buckeyes try to get a late goal to even this thing up. Tyler Inamoto, who wears the A. Caulfield, beautiful breakout chip pass. Here comes Ryder Donovan. Stops, looking for some help, but they're changing, so he doesn't have any, so he'll dump it in softly and wait for his four checker, Jason Doogie, to come in. Here come the Buckeyes. Travis Trelor, the Norwegian, who's been great in the faceoff dot. Nice physical play there behind the net on Peltonen. But the puck comes out. And the Badgers now will try to manage this period to the end and go to the break with a 1-0 lead. Borlicki in the corner. Good job. There were four Badgers around that puck there just to make sure they finish off this period. They're supporting each other very well, Colby. Back to the point. Regula, one more chance, but it's blocked in front. In fact, by his teammate blocked it, Colin Peters. And that's it. First period in the books. Ten shots each. Big face-off advantage for the Buckeyes, 15-6. to six. Napier only saw one goal go by him, and it was a difficult one. He was screened. It was a bar-down shot from Cole Caulfield and Cameron Rowe, who gets the start tonight. Good first period as Cole Caulfield showed his skill in scoring the lone goal. Well, highlights and stats from the first period on the way. Also chat with one of the players. Come right back. We'll do that on the other side of this from Columbus, Ohio, Big Ten Hockey. Here at the Value City Arena. Everything will be all right. And everything was all right for Cole Caulfield and the Badgers. They are lined up in the far tunnel, waiting to take the ice. They're excited. We are 70 seconds away from puck drop here in Columbus. John Butchergross, Colby Cohen, and there are the Badgers. It's nice to be here, isn't it, Butchie? I love being at the rink. It is strange. This is obviously one of the bigger rinks in college hockey. Steve Rollick and the Ohio State hockey community would like a, a smaller, more intimate, louder setting. Certainly the Buckeyes have the funds to do that, so let's get going, Ohio State. Let's give the men and women here an awesome little experience, and uh, that would be fun to, fun to experience here. I think sometime in the future we'll see that here. Yeah, I mean, the program has really done well. They've won. They've been very, you know, 
involved in the tournament, I guess is the best way yeah. to put it. Three they, they're making appearances it. last decade. Yeah, since Steve Rollick took over, this is a team every year that you know what you're going to get out of them. You have expectations that come the end of the year, you're going to be involved to win. Absolutely. There was a dry time for a while that he comes on board, and they've had now three NCAA appearances in the last four years. This is He's just that's a really heart and soul guy. He's my kind of guy, you know. I mean, he just he is passion, he is heart, and he just lives the game. Uh, he's old school. He wants his guys to have fun. He wants them to. You know, he's one of those guys, kind of like me sometimes. These young kids today, don't be so serious. I mean, you got get out and have some fun. Yeah, you play hard. You play like it's your like your life depends on it because you know, that's what athletes and competitors do, and that's what these guys are trying to do right now. One nothing. Second period underway, and both these coaches, Tony Granado, Steve Rollick, I mean, they would carve out your liver on the ice with their <laughs> hockey stick. But off the ice, Tony's the sweetest guy. Oh, in they're the There's greatest. not a better guy than Tony no, Granado. They're the greatest. What did we say the other day after we spoke to the coaches? We're like, it's just too hard because they're all great guys. They are. Like I said, there are. Not enough college hockey teams for how many great coaches there are. And, and these players are lucky to have deep benches uh, just about on every college hockey team in America. And these two schools are no exception. Really, the Big Ten hockey, very healthy this year. It's a loaded conference. So competitive night in and night out. As the Buckeyes come down, looking for the equalizer. Shot on row, rebound in front, but a nice save there by Cameron Rowe. Again, Ohio State's been unable to get that second chance goal, Colby. And if they're going to get one, looks like that's how they're going to get it. Well, it's guys like Tyler Inamoto who are so solid defensively. A guy like that reminds me of Dennis Seidenberg, who just would lock it down in front of the net and make your life miserable. And when you're defending against these types of players, you're not going to get free looks at the net. Still no power plays in this game for either team. No penalties called yet. Had some hits in this game. A couple players spilled, but... So far, no penalties. Dominic Vidoli, number nine, the defenseman for Ohio State, dumps it in. In after it is Camille Sedalocha. But Pelton gets it. He's sealed behind the net. Badgers looking to clear it out, and they will. Here they come. Brock Caulfield sends it up to his brother Cole, but incomplete. The puck is sent back in by the Buckeyes. Sedalocha. Good four check by the Buckeyes, almost got a turnover there. Sedalocha keeps it in. He'll dump it back in and change. Patrick Guzzo out there, number 71, the centerman. Tate Singleton is still out there. He'll eventually change as Caulfield has it. Dumps it softly for his brother. We'll try to tie this up, let them complete the change, and then he'll go change for Wisconsin. He's at the end of his shift. He looks like a much more confident player this year, Brock Caulfield. And it's his skating, it's his strength, it's his playing with the puck, all of the above. But you can just see a little bit of a different swagger in him when he has the puck. And of course, with all these, these injuries and players missing time, he's moved up in the lineup. So he's playing with better players too, which always helps. Number 19, Brock Caulfield, the junior. Obviously, Stevens Point, Wisconsin. He and his brother call home. This is his 78th game as a Badger. You know, Butchie, the other thing you really can't put a price on, playing with your brother. Oh, yeah. You get to play with him on the same team, and then you're on the same line. I got to do that as a freshman in high school. Cool. The last year I ever played forward. One of the most fun experiences of my life because I knew if I got back to the bench after a turnover, I was going to get smacked upside <laughs> the head. So, you know, that, that, there's a lot of fun that comes with that. And this game, at this level, uh, there's still a lot of that in this. Yeah, that's, like you said, it is, whether it's high school or D1 college hockey at Wisconsin, it, it's a lot of like. Wrist shot, blocked, nice block by Josh S. And here he comes up as a forward right now. Wrist shot saved by Napier as Luke Lamaster came down the right wing. The freshman from Duluth, Minnesota, getting his fifth college hockey start. Duluth, Minnesota playing in Wisconsin. I know. Took a wrong turn on the highway somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> and what a program they've turned out to be. The premier college hockey program right yep. now, the Bulldogs at UMB. Won again last night. Scott Sandlin's pretty impressive, isn't he? Absolute. 
wagon right now. Just graduation, guys leave, plug them in, keep talk, going. Talk about no nonsense. Mm. He's a fun guy when we meet with him at the he's Frozen great. Four, isn't he? Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of those guys, NHL caliber, NHL teams are looking at as a guy to come in. Saved by Rowe as people like David Quinn go in, have success for the Rangers. We're seeing college guys get a shot and succeeding. That will help the guys who are here looking, you know, to possibly coach at the NHL level. So Rowe had 14 saves last night in relief of Robbie Baidu after the four goal first period by Ohio State. And tonight he's 14 for 14. So 28 for 28. That's what Tony Granato is looking for. Again, he's undermanned. Probably going to have to win low-scoring, tight games. That's really not what you think about Wisconsin hockey, especially the last couple of years with all these first-round picks they're bringing in. You're thinking we're not going to win a 2-1 to -one defensive game, but you kind of have to think that way now with the roster. Well, and they're going to lose some guys to the World Junior Camp for Team USA. You're going to lose Caulfield and amongst others. You've already got Holloway down. You've got injuries, so you're right. You're going to have to reach deep and find these low-scoring games. But, you know, the teams that are really skilled, Butchie, they tend to have the puck more. Mm -hmm. So as long as you don't turn the puck over at the blue line consistently, you're going to possess it, you're going to have more chance, and you're not going to defend as much. You're right, yeah. And that's funny. We were talking to Caulfield in between periods. Saying, yeah, you're undermanned. It's a challenge. But he goes, and funny, you, you kind of you see guys' personalities get revealed. But you get to play more. <laughs> you know, he wants to play. He's, uh, you know, like I said, those offensive goal scorers, they have a bit of a, a of an ego and a selfishness because they they want to do so much. They know they're good. They want to help their team, and so they like to play a lot. They want to be out there. It's like the superstars back in the day in the NHL that would look at the coach. Yeah, you know, Mary Lemieux, yeah, get me back out there. Yeah, the get more the puck's there. on your stick, the better you feel. I mean, you watch it at any level, whether it's the NHL, whether it's the AHL, the NCAA. The more you touch the puck, your confidence grows, and then you start to see more out of a player. I watched it with Noah Dobson in the playoffs this year for the Islanders. It happens, and it develops. So not a lot happening right now offensively for either team. They're trying to figure out how to get in close and get a good shot. There's a wrist shot, but it's a soft one. Quick whistle, should not have been blown, but from the standpoint, he thought the puck was caught or at least smothered, which is what Rose was doing all game. He kind of been smothering the puck, like he, like I said, like he's doing an ab crunch. And from the angle of the ref, who's in the far corner, it looked, like, it looked like that's what he did again, but that one actually came out. His body was screening the loose puck. Well, when you watch him, Butchie, positionally, he's very square to the shooter, and he looks very solid. And so far, yes, a lot of outside shots, but his rebound control has been good. And we're sitting up in the press box next to the director of hockey ops, Shane Connolly, who's a former goaltender at Wisconsin and will work with him on things like that and it's paying off. Rowe never saw that shot but it was deflected wide. That's Trelor again. He is owning the dots tonight. Number 94 in white. The guy we highlighted before the game. Now he's behind the net trying to make a play. Almost dig to his teammate in front. Cherimetta who's been a lot. This line's been very good for Ohio State. You gotta wonder if tonight they're gonna be rewarded at some point. Slap shot. Nice stick save there on the Vorlicki shot from Napier. Kept it back in by Sam Stang. The freshman wraps it around. Anthony Kerr pinching the defenseman as the Badgers are possessing. Shot wide, but kept in the Ohio State end. Borlicki, easy save by Napier. Good stick battle one. Shot in front, Stang. He's a dangerous shooter, number three. He's had some really nice snipes this year for the Badgers in his young career. Yeah, four goals in his first nine games, Butchie, and it's the craftiness along the wall. Anytime you're able to take the puck behind the net a couple of steps, you get the goalie's head to turn, and you feed it right back out in front for the quick shot. That one was not executed, but that's a good, quick, little, tight play that if executed properly, you always have a good little lane to the net. Ryler Donovan in the dunk. Big boy, a little 50-50 battle there with Guzzo. And the Buckeyes get it out, but back comes Inamoto, the Florida Panther draft pick. As the Badgers go to work, watch out for Doogie in the corner. He still has it now. Watch by Regula. There come the Buckeyes. Got some room. Gildon. Watch by Emerson. Emerson can't get around. Gildon looking. Cycles it back. There's Guzzo. Freshman from Marysville, Michigan. Buckeyes with possession now. Oh, Guzzo set up there. 
Can't get it to him. Badgers can't clear. Kept in. Short side shot. It's loose. Rowe trying to tie up. He can. And what a heads up defensive play by Doogie. The forward slides it back towards his goaltender, Cameron Rowe. So he can smother. The freshman is a big boy. 6'3", 212. Having a good night, perfect so far. Yeah, he's been square to the shooter all night. And when you get a young guy in net, sometimes you look at his feet. Do they Are they busy or are they in position? And so far, he's been very, very solid and in position. I'm looking for rebound control, Butchie. And so far, I'm liking what I see. He covers the puck. He commands his position. He doesn't get pushed out of the crease. So far, really impressed with Cameron Rowe. Played the second and third period last night and gets the start for Tony Granato and so far so good. Let's see how the Ohio State Buckeye team are again. They've been pretty good in the dots. Gustav Westland will try to win this one, but he doesn't. Excellent, excellent job by Owen Lindmark. He won that perfectly. The sophomore from Napier, Illinois. Badgers now, a little two on two down low, quickly developing, but Gorniak can't quite get that puck free. And here comes Ohio State. Tape to tape and going the other way. Gustav Westland. Westland in the slot. Wrist shot tipped just wide. Excellent chance there. Ryan O'Connell, the defenseman. We mentioned that high slot is open for the Buckeyes to take advantage. Tipped in front. Saved by Rowe and he covers up. And again, a bit of a quick whistle. Tate Singleton had a real nice redirection opportunity. And then almost another stab at that second chance we talked about. The Buckeyes just haven't been able to capitalize on that second chance opportunity off a of save by Rowe. Yeah, two chances in a row that had redirections involved and sticks at the net. That's the best chance where Ohio State had bodies on top of the crease. And you see Rowe having to fight for that one, Butchie. That's what you need more of if you're Ohio State. If you're going to take those shots from the outside, you want to start looking for those redirections at the hash mark, maybe a foot from out on top of the blue paint. And that's what you want to see. Tony Granato pretty animated on the Wisconsin bench. So is Steve Rollick. Seems to be some sort of commiserating by both teams. Not sure what's going on. I don't know if they're considering a bench penalty or, but it's not a TV timeout, but it's certainly taken a long time to figure out what's happening here. Perhaps they felt it. Now they're going to look at, oh, the guys, we have a couple penalties going to be called. Maybe, but that's scrum in front after the whistle was blown. Vorlicki and Tate Singleton were kind of squaring up, up in each other's grill a bit. Coincidental minor penalties. Both two minutes for roughing. Tate Singleton, the former New Jersey Titan. We talked about Jimmy Dow Jr., also a New Jersey okay. Titan. So the hockey in that area starting to blow up. Teams, players, they're starting to come from there. You like, at least for me, I'm a Philly guy, Butchie, so I yeah. like to see South Jersey, Middle Jersey, all that area starting to send players Division One. Gaudreau. Johnny Gaudreau, yeah, you can't forget him. Legend. Johnny Hockey. Hobie Baker winner. He's had a pretty good career, right? Average. <laughs> Makes pretty good coin. <laughs> There's our boy Trelor, and, and face-off Dottie's been a menace tonight. It's four-on-four four hockey now. Colby, anything you've seen so far, think it is either team has an advantage. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to look at Ohio State. I'm sorry, you got to look at Wisconsin. You think about the way Cole Caulfield moves laterally offensively. When he gains that blue line, he'll try to start moving laterally to create space. And if he gets moving, he's very dangerous. Great job by Brock Caulfield to win that faceoff from Trelaw. So now we'll see if they can get Caulfield, uh, Caulfield time and space I like to be that. open. I like that. What did I say? Coalfield. Coalfield, yeah. Combined. Just making one name. That's a good idea. Cher, Madonna. <laughs> Same talent. Beyonce. Uh, so we'll try again. Still four and four. It looks like Rollick's going to take Tree Lore off this time. He's going to go with Gustav Westland. Get a little more Stockholm. experience out there. going to try to win this face off on his backhand and get a chance. But again, good job by Caulfield. Good stick to jump in there and just to help out. That's a good little play right there that we didn't see last year. Mm -hmm. Brock Caulfield goes wide with speed to the front. Tipped in front, but goes to the corner. Looked like it was opening up for the Badgers for something good. Yeah, Inamoto jumped in the play there. We talked about how rock solid he was earlier, but there he's showing why the Florida Panther draft pick not afraid to jump in on the offense. Here's a hack. He's turned back by Caulfield. And you're right, his skating is much better this year, Cole Caulfield. Just more fluid. 
Here he is, between his legs. Tries to dangle in the slot, cross check down, nothing called, play continues. Almost another bit of amazing skill from Cole Cockfield between the hash marks, but the Buckeyes get it out and they'll head the other way. Cherimetta has been strong tonight. Trelor back out there. This line's been good for Ohio State. They've kept the puck and given themselves some chances. Here's Trelor with it to the center of the ice. Backhand in front. Weisbach doesn't see it. He might have had a breakaway the other way. Trelor back in. We're still four on four. Coincidental roughing penalties. Here's Preston on the ice. He's got some fresh legs. Watch out. 16. Wrist shot blocked again. A lot of traffic in front of the, both nets, really, so we're starting to see some of those shots that go into the corner. Weisbach doesn't have all of his gas in the tank. Stay on side. Shot wide of Napier. It's, it's up on the net. And Weisbach is down on the ice. Don't know if he got hit high. Badger bench. Tony Granato is up on his feet. Trainer is out now. We'll see if this was a hit towards the head area. Just from the reaction, that's what it looks like. And here's Granado saying, what was that? We'll see if they look at it. Oh, there it is right there. After Weisbach shot the puck, you see coming across was number 94, Travis Trelor. He just, he just kind of puts his arm up to brace himself. It looked look like he vaulted himself or lunged at him. Yeah, I don't actually think that that's a, something he meant to do. To me, it looks like he held up. He put his arm up to protect himself, but he didn't follow through, right. and he didn't raise his arm or his elbow. So I don't have a problem with yeah. that, Butchie. It's close, but I think you're right. I'm, I kind of side with you on that one. It was just he, he, he braced himself. He didn't lunge into him. Yeah, I don't think that should be a penalty, and it doesn't look like they're going to give him one, and that's the right call. A player holds up. He sees a defenseless player. He doesn't follow through. He doesn't leave his feet. All of the different things that you're taught not to do, he didn't do. And Granado, if he's not going to get this call, he certainly wants to maybe set up the next one. Neither team has had a power play. We're almost mid through the hockey game. It looks like it's going to be a low-scoring, tight game. Any, uh, any call that's close, you want it to go your way next time. And I think when he gets a chance to look at that in between periods, I think he's going to see what we saw. And you never want to see a player get hurt, but you just didn't see that principal point of contact at the head. That's the biggest thing they're looking for. Was their head contact? Was the first point of contact in the head with an elbow, with a shoulder, with a hand? And it was not there. And of course, he has to protect his player. He was on the ice for a while. So Absolutely. He wants to show his player, hey, I'm going to... Oh, he always will stick up for his guys. I will state your case. And then later, he'll probably look at that, like you said, like, yeah, that was fine. Here comes Ohio State now. So we're back to five on five. Westland, open. Singleton can't catch, scored off the post. Still free. Play continues. That hit the left post. Looks like the helmet or equipment issue with Cameron Rowe, so they'll blow the whistle immediately. What a great opportunity there. Tate Singleton hits the short side post. Yeah, this is a quick shot right as the zone gets entered, and it beats Rowe as you see the delayed reaction. He goes for the Dominic Hasek, where he yes. drops the stick and reaches back for it, and Tyler Inamoto, the defenseman for Wisconsin, saves that puck. That thing is rolling in the net, and Inamoto whacks it out just at the last second to give Rowe a little bit of extra help right there at the end. Good play by Tyler Inamoto. We've talked about him now three or four times, and Tony Granato said he's that old school two-way defenseman. He'll do a lot for you. That's why I compared him to Dennis Seidenberg. He really reminds me of a guy who can play that 200-foot game and is rock solid. Game number 116 in Tyler Inamoto's Wisconsin career. Game remains 1-0. That was close as the Buckeyes hit the post. And here they come back the other way. There's Cherubetta again. Wrist shot. Score! <laughs> Travis Trelor. We mentioned this line was coming. They've been here all game long. And at long last, Travis Trelor from Norway with the twisted wrister to tie the game at one.
And it's Trelor's ability to change the angle of his shot, and that's why he's able to score. You see right there, as he's releasing the puck, he draws it in about two inches, he throws the goaltender a little bit off, Rose seems like he's on his angle, but it's that little change by Trelor as he hits the top of the circle and he draws it in, and that's why he's able to find that far post and in, Butchie. So it looks like a kind of harmless shot, but it's that little, little change of direction which throws Cameron Rowe, and that's a really good shot, and we got a 1-1 game now. He had a goal and an assist last night. He's off to a good start this year, number 94. As we mentioned, we talked about him in the pregame show. He's got six points now. Five goals, and too, right? his first right? six games. It's impressive for a freshman. He's been great in the dots. The kid from Norway looking good, so now we have a hockey game. The Badgers got to figure out how to get another goal. They really haven't threatened in a while. Meanwhile, they barely had any practice time, so for a freshman to have that kind of impact this quick, that's big time right there. Mm -hmm. See how Wisconsin responds. They walk in front, saved by Napier. Calm and cool as the puck comes out. So right away, the Badgers do come back with a golden opportunity, but Napier's having a sensational year. He'll be in that Mike Richter discussion for best goaltender in college hockey. Owen Lindmark out there. Number 18 with Doogie. Back to the point it comes. Rish shot, another block shot goes wide at Napier. Both teams really selling out, getting in shooting lanes. It's a tight checking. Well-paced game. Both teams really want this win as Christmas approaches. Oh, splastered in the corner. It was Gorniak. Nice hard hit by big Gustav Westland, the strong Swede. Gloved down and kept in. Napier, though, with a nice play, gets it out by two teammates. And Ty Emerson, the captain, will skate it in. Good wheels. Hooked a bit on the hands. Nothing called. Napier will glove and take the whistle and take the face off, which takes us to a quick 30-second break. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. What a perfect shot by Travis Trelor. You are looking at the two goal scorers here in Columbus, Ohio. Cole Caulfield. Travis Trelor, too, both very accurate shots. Yeah, both of these guys really know how to fire the puck, and Cole Caulfield in the first period with the wrist shot through the screen. You mentioned it, Butchie, bar down, and here's a look at Trelor's goal. It's that little change of direction snapshot off the far post. Both of those were perfect shots and beat the goalie from distance. Really good stuff. You're right, it took a perfect shot to score tonight. We mentioned it's tight checking. The goalies have been good, well positioned, square to the shooter as Colby mentioned. And these two guys, it's a game of inches. There's not a lot of net when a goalie's that big and that square, but they found it. And they both have a goal tonight. Vorlicki walks in, round the net, throws it in front, had a chance, go to Caulfield. Wrist shot blocked high into the netting. An opportunity for Vorlicki for a second, maybe to wheel and shoot, but he was looking for number eight. Yeah, number eight, Cole Caulfield. He walks in the slot, but Mark Cherimetta with a good stick, and he was the one who made the turnover on Treeler's goal early in the period. So if you're Steve Rawling and you see that guy, Cherimetta, and he starts to make all these good defensive plays with his stick, you feel really good about the way your team is trending. Treeler, another faceoff win defensive zone. Again, Rollick will get him out there, I'm sure, as much as he can. Any defensive zone faceoff as this game continues on and gets later and later into it. Back come the Badgers. Here they come. Caulfield with the puck. Shot! Wrist shot. Oh, just gloved. Almost beat Napier. High glove. Caulfield again. Tried to open up and get that one, but a real good defensive play there. And the Buckeyes and Trelor. Good play there. Lob it's a out. smart play right yeah. outside his blue line. He doesn't have any help. Instead of trying to skate it and losing it, he advances the puck. That's a very mature play. And we're going to see a power play here for Wisconsin. First one of the game. We've been waiting for this. This is interesting. Caulfield, they're at the end of their shift, so they're not going to be able to start this power play. 
These are the easy ones for the officials to call. We yeah. said it a couple times in the Penn State Michigan game. You're making the ref's job easy. Anytime you stick your stick in there, you get it in on the hands and you draw a guy down. But, you know, I've been pretty impressed with the officiating. The other night at Penn State, yeah. tonight, they're letting the guys play. They're consistent with their calls. That's all you can ask for. Eugene Fadiev is the man in the box, the Ukrainian. So here are the Badgers on the power play trying to regain the lead. Caulfield is out there. It's a it's five forwards like it's on the ice right now. It's a forward power play, yeah. Weisbach and Caulfield were back eight and nine. Well, you lost Kalinyuk and you lost Miller. So now yep. you're going to go five forwards. Here comes Weisbach. You can take a chance here. These guys skating backwards if the Buckeyes get a rush. Stang, number three. He's a good shooter. Gorniak in there. See if the Badgers can get the puck and get set up. Here they go. Now they're ready to go. Caulfield. Weisbach. Set up. Again, five forwards. Caulfield at the point. Gorniak down low, waiting. Caulfield again. Wrist shot looking for Stang in front. Was brought Caulfield. Hand pass. We got a hand pass. Can't hand pass anywhere in college. Nowhere on that, the ice. I called that wrong the other night. We're going to get it right here tonight. <laughs> NHL, you can in your defensive end, but college hockey and no automatic penalty if you shoot the puck over the, the glass in college hockey, unlike the NHL. A few differences. Again, and no hand passes anywhere in college hockey. And you can't change either if you uh, commit the hand pass on defense. Caulfield's got room. Throws it across. Gave up the shot. Weisbach one-timer one blocked in front. Selling out down low was Ryan O'Connell, number 24, the Maple Leaf draft pick. Badgers threatening high and wide. Caulfield has it. 1-1 one, one game. Badgers looking for the lead again. Caulfield moving his feet. Bad angle trying to bank that in off Napier, who was coming off the post. He had it, too. Weisbach. Caulfield loses for his brother to Stang. He's got a good shot, number three. Caulfield throws it across behind a bit. He'll switch spots. Caulfield skates in between his legs, dangles away, but good defense by the Buckeyes to turn him away. Weissbox up top for support. Back down low in front. Caulfield score! What a pass by Jack Gorniak. And Brock Caulfield with the quick release in the slot, snaps it home. And brother, oh brother, it's 2-1 Badgers. Well, you either got to move yourself or move the puck. And here you see a little bit of both. Cole Caulfield, he takes the puck. He doesn't like what he sees. So he, when he starts to roll back up and he realizes I'm flat-footed and all the pressure's out high. So what does he do? He moves the puck down low to Gorniak. Gorniak doesn't dust it off. He gets it out in front to Brock Caulfield. And it's a quick shot in on the net. But so many good things there by Cole Caulfield to realize all all the pressure was sucked out high. I got to move the puck down low, and it's a quick play to the net. That's how you draw it up on the power play, Butchie. Great power play by the Badgers. They were threatening from the get-go. And really, really impressive. Brock Caulfield out to a great start this year, as Colby mentioned earlier. He's got four goals now in the first 10 games. And the Badgers are back. Inamoto, wrist shot, kick save by Napier. Badgers got some jump now. Inamoto, second chance, throws it around the net. Owen Lindmark in there. And back comes Trelor, the goal scorer for the Buckeyes. Working with Preston, Cherimetta, first shot blocked, but it comes back out. Watch out, Regula shot blocked. Puck is loose in front. But it goes behind the net. S. Waiting. Good the patience by S. The Buckeyes just retreat here as they change. They've been forechecking pretty aggressively, but right there while they were changing, they retreated to make sure they weren't caught. Good discipline by the Buckeyes. Shot to 2019 in favor of Wisconsin. It's been a very even game. Just some really well-placed shots. All three scores. Really high-quality shots. S is playing forward right now, the defenseman for Wisconsin. They've got him taking a shift right now up front. I saw it once earlier. Yep. Now he's on the wing. Turnover. Here comes Westland. The Swede turns away. Shot towards the net. You heard it here, the pad of Cameron Rowe. He's been quiet lately, so in the power play, he basically got a break during the power play because it was all Badger. Shot in front, Westland saved by Rowe. Puck is loose, though. Battling down low, and there is a whistle. And there we go. There's some mucking and headlocking down low. Ryder Donovan on Westland. There's Vordlicki with a little bit of pushing and shoving as well with Sidlocha. 
Yeah, both teams having a little bit of success right now, working that behind the goal line out to the front, and Westland is the one who gets the pass from Singleton, and it's that quick shot, Butchie. We saw it on the last goal. That play looked a lot like it, and any time you can get players on the defensive side puck watching, which is what just happened, and then you can get the puck from low to high or from below the goal line out into the slot, you're going to have opportunities to the net, and you can tell Steve Rollick on Ohio State is telling his guys we need more traffic this is a big goaltender we need to make it harder on him looks like there might be some opportunities like you said for rebounds Fadiev who committed the penalty that led to the power play goal back out there number eight and white for Columbus Colin Peters in for checking with Fadiev third forward high here just to make sure it's still a 2-1 game plenty of time to go no need to go crazy yet if you're Ohio State Nice breakout for the Badgers. Here they come. Stang again. Caulfield's back out there. He'll forecheck, wait for his line mates to come onto the ice. Puck is loose in front. Shot over the net. That was on the forward tease. Napier's hurt. Takes his glove off. Grabs something. They're going to let play continue, almost like he wanted to whistle, like he's grabbing his neck, like maybe he took a stick or almost a boot near there. But he seems to be OK. Puts his glove back on and plays continuing. Man, Ryder Donovan came right down the middle of the ice and was about seven feet away and back scratching slap shot <laughs> went over the net. I think he was confused why he had so much space. It was like he was leaning into a harder shot competition type of shot. It's like when a lineman gets a fumble yeah. around the end zone. You Can't don't even help know what himself. to do with it. Trelor turns side of the net. The big guy dance. Preston. Oh, hit from behind and the Buckeyes are going to go on a power play. Trelor vaulting into the boards and when we return Ohio State will have a golden opportunity to tie the game welcome back we showed you that collision at the net and Napier I don't know if there's a little bit of blood there or they're just putting some ice something nicked him it looked like his teammates stick perhaps they're also looking at to see if this penalty is going to be a major that boarding penalty hit from behind. They're trying to figure out, is this a five or a two? But here's the play by Napier. Watch off that slap shot. And something came up and hit him in the neck. Might have been a skate. I think he was a little frightened for a second. That kind of spooks you. But here's the hit from behind on Trelor. Yeah, that should be a five-minute penalty. That's a board from behind, Butchie. Here's another look. And it was. It was the skate. Watch yep. right there, the boot. Ooh, bam. Oh, man, that is scary. Yikes. And he knows that was his skate, knew that it was his. And right away you're thinking, did the blade get me? And he wasn't sure. He saw him take his glove off. Play continued. He took his glove off and was tapping his neck to see if there was any blood. Then we saw the. Wisconsin penalty on number 27. Bam. We've got a five in game for checking from the eye. That's the right call, Butchie. You heard the call. That's it. A team already short a skater. Ryder Donovan is done. So normally teams with 12 skaters up front, they came in with 11, now Wisconsin's down to 10. Yeah, that's a defenseless player, a board from behind. That's the right call by the officials. And yep. college hockey, they review these hits to see, and that's the right call. So now Wisconsin, LeMaster is gonna stay and serve the penalty. So not only do they lose Donovan, that's right. now they lose another guy in the box for five minutes. And when you look over at the bench, there's a lot of room. A lot of room, that's a good point. From a game standpoint, this is Ohio State's chance to maybe get one or two power play goals. They can score as many times as they wish. Westland, back to the point. Walking in, shot, trickles wide. Cheremetta had a chance. Watch out for Grant Gabriel. He's a hot defenseman, number 61 at the point. Big shot. They're going to look for him on that one-timer. Westland and him, they'll be interchangeable up there, and they'll look to make a lane for the one-timer. So watch out for 61 in white. Goals in three straight games. Had one last night. That puck was not out. Looked like it was, but remember, the whole puck has to be outside the paint. And the Badgers now shorthanded, literally, and also we mentioned, down now. A couple more skaters. Everyone's going to be killing here, Butchie. Singleton in now. Buckeyes want one badly. Walking in, trying to get set up. They really haven't been set up yet. And the Badgers clear again. So far, so good. 
Yeah, sometimes you get these five minute majors and you have a tendency to take your foot off the gas, but you can't do that. Wisconsin has too many good skilled players that are looking for shorthanded goals. Gildon, number 18, to Leighton Ahak, the defenseman. Vegas Golden Knight draft pick number four in white. Dangerous pass across. Good They're not stick. really dangerous, but it's a good stick. Broken up. Anthony Kerr, the defenseman, comes in all by himself. Now the Buckeyes come back. You see the time left on the power play in red, top of your screen. Singleton, here they come. Gildon walking in, pass across, shot. Blocker saved by Rowe. Not a lot on that shot. And Rowe was able to make the save. Gildon has had the puck a lot this power play. Shot, blocked, without a stick is Doogie. So now it's a almost a five on three for the Buckeyes if they take their time. They want to get Gabriel the puck. Gildon, shot through traffic. And an easy block and an easy clear. They had a chance to, to keep that puck possession and get a better chance than that, but it doesn't happen. And Gabriel comes back to get it behind his own net. Fresh skaters and the Buckeyes again will try to come up to tie the game. They got plenty of time. You see left in the power play. Westland. So far so good for the Badgers. Penalty kill. And another easy clear. Gabriel back to get it. You mentioned earlier, undrafted player. Chara Mehta walks in. Trying to win the board battle, and they don't as Gabriel goes back to get it. Got a text from Donny Granato saying he had him for two years at the national team program. He played with McAvoy and Hannafin, Wierenski, Caleb Jones. Kind of fell through the cracks a little bit, but a very good player with the puck right now. Westland. It's easy to fall through the yeah. cracks with those guys. 61 has it. Westland shot blocked to the corner Badgers on a quick but good job by Preston here he comes to Westland another chance for Westland saved by Rowe the puck is loose but he covers it again right around the stomach area he's had multiple saves like that not sure if he has it trying to keep the body position and the puck pressed against his body and he did it again Trying to survive this five-minute major power play. Obviously, it will drip over into the third period. Just 36 seconds to go left in this period. So they will begin the power play in the third period as well, Ohio State. They'd love to get one here in this final 36 seconds. Yeah, if you can go into the period with a goal, with a little bit more momentum, feeling good about yourself, mm -hmm. as opposed to not feeling great about the power play, that'll make a big difference for the jump of the third period, especially when you get that fresh ice to start the power play. That's another battle won behind the net by Tyler Inamoto and his defensive partner. So, so far, Wisconsin doing a very nice job of outnumbering the Ohio State power play along the wall on this power play. Singleton goes after it. Fadiev goes after it. Fadiev has it behind the net. They better hurry, under 10 seconds left. But the Badgers will get it out, and they will kill at least this portion of the penalty and kill the remainder of the second period. The third period will begin with a 75-second power play by the Ohio State Buckeyes as they try to get their netminder. Scary situation for him, taking a skate up high in the second period. But the Badgers lost their lead, but got it back on a Brock Caulfield tally. Stay tuned, second intermission coming up. We'll chat with an Ohio State Buckeye when we return. Highlights and stats as well from this 2-1 game. The game is on tomorrow at noon. Ohio State, Michigan State, ABC, noon Eastern. College football presented by PlayStation 5. Big game for the Buckeyes. And for Sparty, having a nice year beating Northwestern and Michigan. Third period around the corner. The Caulfield brothers having some fun. Been doing that since they were probably four and five. Both Caulfield brothers have scored tonight. Great night for their family. I was just going to say. Watching back in Wisconsin to see their boys. Mom and dad must be very proud. Both lighted up in the same game. They're sitting next to each other on the bench. Nothing can warm a parent's heart more than that on a cold night in the rink here come the Buckeyes power play Trelor shot arm save as flailing that left limb was Cameron Rowe you know he can shoot it so he's going to be looking for it here got him less than a minute on this power play left 
tree lord along the wall. Got to get the puck to some space here to get set up. They really quite haven't yet. Now they are. Here they go. Good chance for the Buckeyes to tie the game. Gabriel shot blocked in front by Emerson. Tips high in the air. Kicked out of the zone. And the Badgers survived that onslaught. One more rush for the Buckeyes to get a power play goal. Gabriel with it. Set up again. Chara Mehta. He's been good with the puck, number 17 in white. Walking towards the net. Spins, front, Preston shot, saved by Rowe, a big one. He's just playing with grit and guile right now, Cameron Rowe. Preston walks in, back to the point, open shot. One timer blocked and cleared, and the Badgers survive the five minute power play. The commitment, Butchie, in the defensive zone. When we did Wisconsin's hockey games last year, it was obvious they were full of skill, mm -hmm. but I did not see the commitment that we see tonight. The shot blocking, the details below the goal line, the stick position, all the little things that make you successful, much different looking team. Singleton walks in, fans on the shot. Cole Caulfield will softly dump it out. No longer shorthanded, can't ice it. You're right, this is kind of a Tony Granato kind of game. He's probably so proud of the way his understaffed team is dealing with their adversity and how they're playing. Their goaltender is in total battle mode right now. He is just fighting that puck. And that's how Tony Granato played as a player. And he has all this skill, but he wants his guys with skill to play the way he played. Yeah, that combination can produce good things. Ohio State showing a little offensive skill of their own. Cherimetta with the spinorama. And that's just good awareness. You realize you're a right-handed stick, and you're not going to have the net if you stay on your strong side. So you spin around, you get yourself a little bit of body position, and then you use the short side of the net, Butchie. That's a really smart little heads-up play that goes unnoticed because it doesn't go in the net, but you give your line mates enough looks like that, and you're going to capitalize. Napier plays the puck behind his net, but Lindmark with a nice forecheck with Gorniak. Another good stick by Lindmark. Turnover. Gorniak with it. Lindmark trying to create some space. Good shot. High save in the chest area by Napier. Keep it two to one. Shots on goal now. That was the 22nd Wisconsin shot. Ohio State with 26. Late Nahak throws it in. Squirts out to the slot, but S is there to pick it up for the Badgers. Here he comes. Plenty of room, rattles it around the glass, behind the net, other side, but Ohio State has it with some room. Nice pass up by Fadiev. Gets it to Colin Peters. Peters taken off the play nicely. Buckeyes have room. Shot tipped up into the netting. Is Streaking across the front of the net was Austin Pooley, number 12. That was the shot by Ryan O'Connell right there. And Pooley, number 12, wears the C right there. His uncle's number is retired here, number 22 in the rafters. Wearing his dad's number this year for his last year of Buckeye hockey, the senior from nearby Dublin, Ohio. Pretty cool, the second one to be the captain here. Really cool. Career game 116 for Austin Pooley. Heart and soul type of player for this Ohio yeah. State team. I'm sure he'll look back at his life, his best four years playing college hockey for the Ohio State Buckeyes for a kid from Dublin. That's a huge deal. Some good hockey players come out of the state of Ohio. Mm -hmm. RJ Umberger, Carter Camper. Sean Corrali, also from Dublin, went down and played for Miami. Enrico Blasi now really carving out a nice Boston Bruin career. Enrico's now at Providence. He is. What a big pickup for Providence, yeah. getting him in there. Weisbach looking for some room. Nice pass in Emoto. Excellent extra pass to Caulfield. His shot that was blocked by Quinn Preston. Another shot blocked. Kept in by S at the blue line. Still kept in. Badgers scratching and clawing their way tonight. Inamoto softly towards the net, but knocked down. Trelor has some room. The defenseman, Regula, has some space. Wrist shot saved with the left shoulder. It drops into the mitt for Cameron Rowe. As Grant Gabriel had a chance down the right wing. Well, anytime you're a defenseman and you get into one of those board battles, you might as well keep going, and that's what Grant <laughs> yeah. Gabriel did. And all of a sudden, you get that puck up in your skates, and we've mentioned how big of a shot that this guy has. He kind of stumbles a little bit, mm -hmm. but gets a good look at the net. But look, when you're down by a goal, Butchie, and you've got three goals in your last three games, you're feeling it. You're getting bounces, so why not keep following up? 
looked for a pass, and there you go. He gets a good opportunity at the net. Good faceoff win by Guzzo, but Vidoli couldn't quite keep it in. But the Buckeyes right back in again. Here they come. Gildon. Wrists it high and wide off the Gildon pass. Shot towards the net. Buckeyes going for shots in traffic right now. Gorniak just stays on side. Throws it. Side of the net. Good job by Napier to seal off that short side post. C.J. Regula, number 65 out there now for the Buckeyes. Warlicki. Badgers being careful. Here's Caulfield. Leaves it. Gets pulled down. That's a penalty. Not a good penalty there. For Sedloka. And here come the Badgers. Still attacking with the extra attacker on. But there's the whistle. And Wisconsin will go on the power play. Caulfield moving his feet. Drew the penalty from Camille Sedlocha. Minutes holding. That's the second time Cole Caulfield using his feet, drawing the penalty. These are things we didn't necessarily see last year, but he keeps going. Yeah. He draws the penalty. There's no embellishment there because you know the refs are just waiting for that, Butchie, mm -hmm. but he keeps moving. So now we're back to the power play. It's a five forward set for Wisconsin. It is the third period. You're up by a goal. So you got to be a little bit careful here with five forwards. But I think they trust the fact that these guys are responsible and they're going to give him at least the first minute of the power play. Caulfield with his 12th career multi-point game in this game with a goal and an assist. He has the puck now. Weisbach walks in, throws it across. Here comes Caulfield, fakes the shot, throws it back to Weisbach. Weisbach, shot, short side high into the netting and the faceoff will remain in the Wisconsin end. Two Caulfields out there right now for Wisconsin. Stang number three. Who's a good finisher? Weisbach is just a really good all-around player, number nine. He and Caulfield are on the points as forwards. There's Brock Caulfield who scored the second goal. He's in the middle. And they'll be looking to break the box. They get the face off back. They're going to try to put it through the scene, but you got to be a shooter when that happens. Weisbach falls down. Caulfield steps in, but a real good stick work there by number 12, Austin Pulley, to clear that puck down. Badgers again, seeing five on the power play. Here comes Cole Caulfield. There's Brock Caulfield with the puck now. He's got support with Gorniak, but he throws it behind the net. It's a good play right there, just releasing it around the wall. It's a bad bounce to get out of the zone. But that's the right play by Brock Caulfield. You have pressure, you release it around the wall to the weak side, and you've got to have a player there ready. Weisbach, nice backhand pass. Brock Caulfield. Cole has it. Skating backwards, throws it back to Weisbach. Cole Caulfield. Good stick again by Preston this time. Tries to high stick it out. Canton. Here come the Badgers. They got some room now. Wrist shot stand. Kick save by Napier. Slap on the ice is Caulfield. He wants it. Pass in front. Wow. Score! What a pass. Jack Gorniak. It's a three-point night for Cole Caulfield. He's a finisher. He's got a secondary assist. And he's got a primary assist on that beauty. Just tap it in, Jack. Yeah, Jack Gorniak's going to score the goal. But wow, Cole Caulfield from his strong side. He's going to get the pass from across here. And he's going to one-touch it. What a skill play that is. It's one thing, Butchie, to do it when you're on your offside. But Cole Caulfield from his strong side with the one touch pass to Gorniak. All he's got to do is redirect it into the net. That's a big time skill play right there by a big time player late in this third period. Two Montreal Canadian draft picks. Gorniak's a fourth rounder. Caulfield, of course, 15th overall, a first rounder. And that Canadian combination gives the Badgers a 3 1 lead here in Columbus, Ohio, as they go for the split, losing last night 4 2. Well, Gorniak never played junior hockey. He went from Wisconsin high school hockey right here. And that's so hard. It took him a little bit of time, and now he's finally grown into himself. His confidence has caught up to his skating, which has always been his strength. And now the guy's starting to fill the net up, but. I'm sorry, that pass was incredible. Oh. That was sick. And this is kind of like, you know, a night like tonight, you win, you get three points, then you start getting the Hobie Baker category. You got some great numbers, you're showing some leadership, you're drawing penalties, and then you go on the power play and set up a tap-in goal. This is kind of Cole Caulfield saying, okay, time for my self to take my game to the next level and let's get in the Hobie Baker conversation. And he's got the puck again. And if he has a good world junior, he's gonna come back full of confidence. 
So again, it's his 12th career multi-point game in college hockey. One goal and two assists tonight. Three wide come the Badgers. Here they come, Stang walks in, shot! Over the net, into the netting. No penalty coming up. Napier once again on the ice. Felt like he took some contact. But boy, Cole Caulfield is feeling it tonight. That is a velvety pass. This has got to be one of the more satisfying nights in Cole Caulfield's Wisconsin Badger career. He has really owned the ice. Three points so far. Yeah, his skill has been on full display in all three zones, doing everything. Gets a goal in the first period, the wrist shot with his brother standing in front of the net. Then you see the skill on display. Then he sets up a power play goal with great awareness. The penalty kill is all watching him out high, so he gets it down low. He gets his brother involved. You got to love that. He ends up with the goal. That one feels just as good. He's been really good. This is the best game that I've seen him play, but it's not just the goals and the assists, Butchie. It's the maturity of his game. His stick is active. His feet are moving. He looks like a really good player to me. <laughs> he really does. The Badgers, a two-goal lead now. But this thing is not over. The Buckeyes have had chances. They could easily pot two quick ones. Pass in front as Wisconsin looks for more. Losing last night 4-2, to two, up tonight 3-1. to one. Gorniak behind the net. He's been really strong tonight. Again, the Badgers will finish up the first half of their season next week in East Lansing. They got two at Michigan State, and then they're done, and they don't know when they'll play again. Schedules are not out past the new year. Grant Gabriel goes and gets it. Number 61 wears an A on his sweater. Going three straight. They could use another one. Here, Rowe catches it, no one near him, but he'll take the face off just in case. Hey, Sunday afternoon, college basketball triple header. Three top 20 teams, Villanova and Texas tip off the day at noon. The great Xavier Cincinnati crosstown rivalry. And then five Eastern, 20th ranked Kentucky takes on Georgia Tech. All three games on ESPN, always the app. And we're great to be with you here on ESPNU. Little Villanova hoops, my hometown. Yeah. Your boy Jay Wright. He's the man. He is what a good guy. Man. Couple saves for Rowe in tight. Puck is still loose. And the Buckeyes have just not been able to capitalize on those pucks that are alive and bouncing in front of Badger goaltender Cameron Rowe, the freshman. But they're not afraid to get involved. They look at these face-off plays right at the net. That's design. Yeah. Catches the goaltender off balance and that's a nice job by Ohio State. And like you said, Butchie, it's 3-1, to one, but Ohio State has enough firepower on this team. They've got enough guys who have been playing well. Their games are trending in the right direction, but they are not out of this hockey game. They keep that puck in. Westland, nice move. Throws it towards the slot, but no one there. Caulfield hit hard by Westland, but he got it out of danger. And his skating really looks good tonight, number eight. Obviously, the swagger's moving with three points. He's playing a lot, which he likes. <laughs> Westland, good stick work there by Inamoto, the senior. Shot saved by Cameron Rowe. He's got to be on his toes the rest of the way for shots like that. Buckeyes will be peppering the net. Weisbach. Stang. Oh, man, good wrist shot. That hit the outside of the net. Short side high from number three. He can really deliver it. Buckeyes. Saved by Rowe again towards his belly. Can't keep that rebound though. And Stang comes back the other way, number three, all by himself. Chip it in, get it, fire it. He loves to shoot it. He's got a good shot. But Napier is there. Tommy Napier came into the night with a 935 career save percentage, 937 this year. He's really a great netminder for Ohio State. That's why they are an NCAA tournament threat. Just two and three this year with five games under their belt. Unlike Wisconsin, who only has the two games next weekend, the Buckeyes have four games left. They go to South Bend for two, and then come back here for two against Arizona State. Those aren't Big Ten games, but they are games in the standings. But Arizona State playing a lot of Big Ten teams out east here. Good for the Big Ten to help them out. And Arizona State's been such a great addition to college hockey, representing Arizona. 
They have cool uniforms. They're well coached. They're winning. They're a tournament team. They would have been a tournament team last year. They're in my Bucci main college hockey top 16 right now, Colby. So, I mean, they're they're real. Like, they're here. Well, I guess you can go to practice, yep. play nine holes, and then head to the pool. Perfect. Shot saved by Napier. Almost came off that post. Body strewn in the corner. You see them top part of your set as the Badgers try to get another one here, but Regula with a good stick. The defenseman tries to get it out. Can't quite. And now there's a whistle. And we got a slashing penalty coming up. So when we come back, we have an Ohio State Buckeye power play on the way. Down by two. Jack Gorniak, who had the 3-1 goal, took the pass from Cole Caulfield, is now in the box for slashing. Right there, a little chop to the hands on C.J. Regula, who was trying to clear that, and that's a good call. That's the right call. Yep, if that happened in the middle of the ice, maybe not, but certainly there, that was the right call. And so this is a big moment for the Buckeyes. Plenty of time, 9.42. They want to at least try to make this a one-goal game and get in that pull the goalie territory, but we're not even really close to that. There's a lot of time left, and they've been pretty good in the face-off dot. Quinn Preston's been dangerous. He almost sounds like he might get one soon. Trelor, our boy, our Norwegians in the dot wins another face-off clean. And Gabriel, the red-hot goal scorer, fires, but a good block there. This Ohio State Owen power Lamar. play. This, this has bailed them out a lot over the last five years. They've got the second best power play since 2016 in the NCAA behind Harvard. So they could certainly use one right now. Yeah, J.B. Bittner works with the power play a lot. There's Preston. He's free. It's outside the net. It's oh, safe. man, that puck looked like it was in. But Cameron Rowe puts his left pad out and saved the goal. Preston had two chances there. Almost got it. So the power play off to a good start. Preston's still out there. Cherimetta with the puck. He's going to walk in. Throws it, but it's to the Badgers, but the Buckeyes get it back. But then cleared nicely there by number 24, Anthony Kerr. Gabriel scanning and making a nice pass into the zone. But again, another turnover. They haven't managed the puck real well in the offensive end here, trying to get that nice chance. They've turned it over a bit too much, I'm sure, to the coaching staff's liking. Yeah, one too many cute plays right inside the blue line. You want to get that puck just like there, get it in deep, and then go out and number Wisconsin. Try to win a board battle, release the puck around the wall, just like you're seeing now, and try to set up. Here they go. They got room now. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. That's Dominic Vidoli, number nine, the defenseman, down low, back to Ahak, back to Vidoli. Let's see if he wants to shoot it. No, he'll go down low, swept in front by Singleton, nothing doing. Ahak, wrist shot, blocked again by the Badgers. When a power play, when a penalty kill is aggressive like Wisconsin has been, Butchie, the thing you talk about, the terminology is release pressure. Release it from the strong side around the wall. Use the dasher, get it around to the weak side, and that'll buy you enough time to get into your formation. Bad bounce. And the Badgers come out. Gorniak is open for a breakaway if they get it to him, but it hits the skates of Adoli. And we're back to even strength. Good job by the Badgers. A couple nice saves by the goaltenders. A couple blocked shots, and they escape that power play chance by the Buckeyes, who now lead in shots 34 to 28. Look at the block shot number. They're up to 16 for the Badgers. There'll be some bruises on their trip back to Madison tonight, but it could feel good if it's a... A win over the Buckeyes. Never hurts as bad when you go home with the victory. Ah, it'll be a short flight back up to Madison. 5.30 starts and won't get home too late. Make it home before midnight. Gain an hour that way too, right? It's even shorter. Right, yeah. Really last, good Last effort. couple of years we've been out in Madison, yeah, Wisconsin. Last this is our year. first year not heading out there. Last year we were there with twice, twice within yeah. the week. That was fun January. Six forty left here in the third. John Butchergross and Colby Cohen, Big Ten Hockey on ESPNU. Of course, ESPN, your home of the Frozen Four, as always this year. We hope to be in Pittsburgh. Would love to see some fans there. We'll see how the winter goes. Next two Frozen Fours, Pittsburgh and Boston. Two, two great, great hockey cities. cities. Yeah. <laughs> we'll eat well in the North End, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. Mike's Pastries. 
Uh, you know, I'm mainly a meat fish and egg guy, but I'll carve it up You're on the road with you, Colby, at the I North End. We'll go, we'll go to Mike's Pastries. We'll show you a good time. We'll parm it up. We'll lobster rav. <laughs> Here come the Buckeyes. A chance. Shot saved by Rowe. Excellent snapshot chance there by Colin Peters. But really, it was Quinn Preston who had two golden opportunities. Yeah, this is one of the best saves of the game. And the goaltender, Cameron Rowe, uses oh, the post and his skate. Skate to post. Just to squeeze that puck out. And boy, it doesn't get much closer. And what a big goal oh, that would have been. Great camera work, fellas, down low. Look at the commitment by Wisconsin, though. Oh. The bodies are flying. You've got four guys. People are diving. Looks like playoff hockey when you get into a scrum like that, Butchie. That was just, I mean, that's great job by our photogs and we had three great shots of that save director Bozinski must have been going nuts <laughs> give me camera two give me three give me four one timer just wide two goal game trying to get that next one so they can play pull the goalie and try to tie it Gabriel had another absolute bomb there looking for four goals in four games but man Cameron Rowe is just battling Chara Mehta has had the puck a lot. This line's begin. This has been the best line so far for the Buckeyes. Trelor, Preston, and Chara Mehta. Rollick's going to roll them out here probably a lot the rest of the way to try to get this thing closer as Inamoto. He's going to see the ice a lot with Emberson. Gorniak's been good. Just a real gutty performance by the Badgers. Really since the first period last night when they were down 4-0, they've been very good. Westland whiffs, gets it again, short side. Shot in front, another save. Third save into the glove of Cameron Rowe. That might have been the best of the night. Singleton looks to the rafters. What do I got to do? Making it look easy, too. The lateral movement by Cameron Rowe, really impressive. And Gustav Westland, a guy who you want to have the puck around the net with the nifty little pass in front to Singleton. And it's like tic-tac-toe around there. They're getting all sorts of chances. The quick little glove on Singleton. Oh, that was an arrogant glove save right there. <laughs> you think you're going to score. Cameron Rowe's confidence is just bulging right now. He's feeling good. Watch out, Cole Caulfield. Shot just wide, looking for his fourth point of the night. Golden opportunity. Napier was in good position. There wasn't much net to see for Caulfield. It happened so quickly. Back on the Buckeyes. Looking for the 3-2 goal, but tipped out of there nicely by G Jesper Peltonen to get it out of danger. Yeah, and he's become a regular in the lineup for Wisconsin, and he's been good tonight. A lot, mm -hmm. of, a lot of good simple plays, a lot of good stick plays. He's killed some penalties. Nice job by him stepping up. Save again by Rowe with the blocker. Buckeyes up to 38 shots. Caulfield's going to be the first star of this game, but Rowe's going to be the next. And here comes Caulfield. Will he make it? Four to one. Backhand save by Napier. Caulfield at the end of his shift had two golden opportunities. But Tommy Napier keeps it a two-goal game. Ahak sauces, and that's offside at the line. Cole Caulfield at the end of a shift tried to lift that backhander over the pad of Napier but he was a bit pooped. <laughs> Couple big goalies from the, the great Midwest. Tommy Napier on your right, St. Louis, Missouri. Cameron Rowe from Illinois. They're both big boys, 6'3", over 200 pounds, and they've both been great tonight. Couple of great efforts by these goaltenders, but Cameron Rowe, the freshman, he's the story tonight, battling around his crease. Played last night in relief, gets the start tonight, his first of the season, and the guy's been all over the place. He's held his position well, he's battled for rebounds, and in this third period, Butchie, he's been forced to be a little bit all over the place to make saves. <laughs> yeah. A little bit of Dominic Hasek in him. Yeah, I think Tim Thomas, Dominic Hasek, or Tim Thomas played college hockey. You kind of get that sense that he's just a lot of heart, a lot of guts. He's a little more busy tonight. 14 shots last night, tonight 39 shots, 38 saves so far. So a really nice appearance tonight. And you're Tony Granato. You brought in Badoon. You felt good about him. And now you see this type of effort out of Cameron Rowe. And you feel like you might have two guys who can start games for you. Yeah, Dad, Rocky, and Mom, Michelle, I'm sure, are watching. Proud of their boy tonight, looking to get college hockey 
win number one in net, and he's only 337 to go as the Badgers look for more. Delayed offside, they're going to have to clear now and come out. As the Buckeyes again. Westland's been good, he's playing a lot, and yet saved by Rowe again. It trickles down in front of him. Westland took a whack. Borlicki didn't like it. Threw his man down to the ice, and Westland's been really coming on in this game. We mentioned that the Badgers could be tiring. They're short staffed on the bench, as Colby mentioned. There's a lot of room on there. It's like a ballpark of a 10-1 baseball game in the top of the night. Lots of, lots of seats available there on the Wisconsin bench. While well, Steve Rollick, there's J.B. Bittner, his assistant, trying to figure out their ride. And Westland right now, the Swede's been good. Trelor's out there taking a face off. 50-50, taken by the Buckeyes. Here they go. Got to get one quickly now. They need two in the final 315. Gabriel throws it back behind the net. There's Preston out there. 16 and White's had some chances to score. Trelor backhands it. Not quite far enough. Race to the puck. Good job by Cherimeta to get to it. Just past behind the net. There's Westland again using the big body. Good hands. Buckeyes are set up. We'll let you know when they pull their goalie. It's coming soon. Gabriel. In fact, they have. Extra attacker is on. Six attackers on for the Buckeyes. Wesley. Steve Rollick, very aggressive. Of course, he's down two. This is the move you make. Terrametta. Gabriel. Looking. Not a lot of room to shoot. A lot of bodies in front of Rowe. That puck trickles wide, slowly. Terrametta. Back to Gabriel. Fans on the shot. Brock Caulfield gets it out. His brother's out there sniffing for point number four. Number... Eight. Whistle blows, and we have an offside at the blue line with 2.25 to go. This is when Cole Cockle does not want to come off the ice. <laughs> he sees that empty net. He wants to stay out there, but Tony Granato is going to get fresh skaters out there. It's 2.25 to go. Napier is now back in the net with the face-off at center ice. I still like keeping the goalie pulled here like we talked about. Have the extra, if you have an extra skater out there, you should be able to get the puck anyway. But I guess a, a clean face off, quick goal. Uh, but you could play street hockey goalie on the logo there with, with a defenseman, right? No, and I agree with you because what happens is, is if your goaltender's in the net and you dump the puck, you never get that opportunity yeah. to outnumber the puck. If it's already six, you can get three guys in on the puck and there's no way they're going to have a clean looking breakout. I'm with you. I'm in the camp that at that center ice face off, when you're down, two like this, yeah. I'm keeping the goaltender out. But, but even, even the dot just outside the blue line, I like, I like already have Because yeah. you can put a D-man, like you said, in the hash marks, kind of play, and then another guy in, in case, front of him. And, and then you yeah. don't give up the red line. Right. I mean, it's important that you stack the red line if you lose the draw, and then you tempt him. Okay, you want to shoot from beyond the red line, have a center fielder. Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. I, I like having the goaltender out, but... There's a reason these guys get paid what For they sure. get paid to coach. For sure. So and we're not going to second guess him too much. And just get, a little bit. And get the parking spot he gets down yeah. below. He's, he's in front of Gene Smith, the AD. That's Rob. true. That is an, that is an impressive That's parking pretty, spot yeah. that he gets at this arena. He's five feet from the door here at the Value City Arena. So Rollick and the Buckeyes and Napier will come out of there as soon as they can. They'll try to win this face off, gain the red line shoot it in around and then Napier will sprint and try to get the extra attacker. So what we'll keep an eye on, if they do win it and dump it, will the player, the six skater, be on quick enough to make an impact on the four check? Because what happens too often right, is they get that clean breakout. Yeah, you don't want to lose any 50-50 battle and have an extra skater, even like right here, could maybe get up and have that play. But as it turns out, that was probably Rollick's defense. That could have happened and that net could have been open. <laughs> and that's why we're up here. That's right. <laughs> So the Buckeyes need to get the puck out. they got to move their feet, get going, and get Napier out. And that's going to be icy. And that's why I like to have the extra attacker out as soon as possible. An extra guy could be open for the Absolutely. pass. Absolutely. See, I, I think there you go for a short support play, have one more guy out on the ice. Then that forces the defense to not be able to cheat. The, the D do a great job there for Wisconsin of keeping the gap, not giving up the red line. But if there's another player applying pressure, you don't have that ability. Season high in shots for Ohio State. They got 40. It's the most they've had in the game this year. But Cole Caulfield's 12th career multi-point game. A goal and two assists. He has counted in all three goals and drew the penalty for the third goal as well. He's been a monster. Your first star tonight, Cameron Rowe, the goaltender, just wide of him. He's going to be the second star. Brock Caulfield's been good. 
Gorniak's been good. Gorniak's good. been really Inamoto's good. has been really good. Who's out there now with Emerson. They're going to try to preserve this 3-1 lead. Goalie's out. Extra attacker on for the Buckeyes. Westland throws it in front. Puck bouncing around, but good movement by Rowe, post to post. Under 90 seconds to go. Buckeyes need one quickly now. Preston, got to get Pecks on the net. Gabriel, no shooting lane. Ahak tipped into the net, face off good to the right there. It's another good stick. We've seen that all game. Wisconsin players, maybe not the most physical group. No. Especially when they're understaffed like this. Yep. But the ability to have good stick positioning and good body positioning has served them well. I've seen a lot of pucks get deflected up out of harm's way just by having a good stick yep. or being in the right lane. That's good coaching right there. Yeah, they're a small team, and Ryder Donovan's out. Of course, he with the hit from behind. Dylan Holloway is certainly that sturdy guy they missed. You mentioned he's with Team Canada in the World Juniors. And he's a brick out there. Yeah, I mean, he shouldn't have left. He should have stayed here. He should have been playing hockey. He could, could have gone to the Canada camp afterwards. Now he's not even playing because they're off the ice. And that turned out unfortunate for him. He needs to play, and he would have helped. But to get this win tonight for Tony Granado, get back to 5-5, five and 5-3 five, five and three in the Big Ten. It's a nice road win for the Badgers. Under a minute to go until they get there to make it officially happen. And... Just looking for a nice little juicy empty netter. Maybe Doogie can get it. He was, looked like he was offside, not called. Puck didn't quite go into the zone, though, so it never really was an offside call. And here come the Buckeyes again. They really miss Tanner Lazinski, don't they, the Buckeyes? Cool, that one forward who can just take the game over. I mean, what an impressive player he was. We'll probably see him in Philadelphia at some point. playing in the NHL at yeah. some point this season. He'll get a chance. Buckeyes shot over the net and high as Tate Singleton trying to make it a one-goal game. That puck came outside the zone. That will be offside. I'm sure Cole Coffin will come over the bench here. Tony Granato will give him a chance for his fourth point. They're very high on Tanner Lazinski in Philadelphia. Right. I, I work on the broadcast there in Philadelphia, and I I'm around, I hear what they say, I hear how they talk about him, and I think they're expecting him to come in and challenge. Maybe not make the team, maybe he will, yeah. depending on how his training camp is, but he will challenge and push for a roster spot. Caulfield trying to get his third goal, that's going to be icing. Two goal lead though, it's worth it. Got no problem with that with 15 seconds left. Give it a shot, try to get your second goal and your fourth point. You deserve it, you've played hard. Uh, you're going to go back to Madison with the win. It's going to be a great plane flight. And then he'll be off to Plymouth for the World Junior Camp for Team USA. That's right. We'll leave in a couple of days, I believe. It's 46th game of his Wisconsin career. Now with 48 points in his 46 games, more than a point a game. Try to chip that to Weisbach for a tap in goal. One more chance for Cherimetta. Oh, his fifth bad one. <laughs> I hate his stick that. broke in half oh. and he just threw it against the end boards. He's had enough. And Gabriel slapped in frustration. Buckeyes really wanted to get that sweep. They're a competitive bunch led by a competitive coach, but it's the Wisconsin Badgers saluting and hugging their goaltender. He was outstanding tonight. 14 for 14 last night. Look at that. Last two nights he saw 55 shots. Only one went by him. Got good offensive support from the best player, Cole Caulfield, with three points. And the Badgers, and they'll salute. No handshakes during this pandemic, just some stick taps. Fist bumps and stick taps. To the opponents, to those watching on television, and Cameron Rowe, man, he's got to be sky high to get your first college hockey victory in net. Yeah, and he was tested tonight. This was not an easy game, especially in the third period. Ohio State put a lot of pressure on him. He was forced to make a lot of saves to be out and around his net, and boy, he was good. Let's take a look at all the action, all the goals in this one. Cole Caulfield began it with that bar down wrist shot. Just a twisted wrister, as you called it, right under the bar, through the screen. That's how you draw it. Chirometta gets the turnover and feeds Tree Ward. Yeah, that quick little snapshot off the far post and in. That's a good goal for Ohio State. Tick, tack, toe. Yeah, Brock this was Caulfield. That was the power play goal we love, Butchie. That strong side one timer into the slot. That's a hard play to execute. And then here's the last one the one touch pass from Caulfield to Gorniak on the back door. And that was a pretty one, Butchie. Final score here in Columbus, Ohio. Wisconsin 3, Ohio State 1. A great night for Cole Caulfield. It's a great night for Brock Caulfield as well.
Brock had an assist on that last goal as well. Passed it to his brother, and he's uh, with us now. Man, Brock, this has to be your best night as a Badger, at least certainly one of them. Yeah, it was pretty special. Uh, great win for the guys. We've been depleted the last uh, few weeks here, and it was great to get a win. Brock, what's it like to play with your brother? Obviously, he's got a lot of tout around him. He's a phenomenal player, but go to the human side of it for us. What's that like? He's your baby brother, just to be out there with them. Yeah, it's it's so special. Uh, on a stage like this, it's incredible. And he's a great player, but he's a great friend, too. And I'm really lucky to be playing with him. What's it like to play short staff tonight? You guys didn't even have the full roster. Yeah, I mean, adversity. We came together as a group and uh, got a win. It wasn't easy, and uh, we battled through some times. But uh, Camero played great behind us, and uh, it was really fun. Where were, uh, where were Paul and Kelly watching the game tonight, your parents, you think? Uh, back home, and I'm sure they're smiling right now. <laughs> They've got a lot to smile about. Thanks, Brock. Good luck, and uh, have a safe trip back to Wisconsin. Thank you very much. Great job. Brock Caulfield, Cole Caulfield. We talked to them both tonight. They look a lot alike. Both amazing flow. I don't know if that's Paul or Kelly. Probably Kelly. Probably her jeans. <laughs> it's probably Kelly. She's yeah. probably got a man. It's usually mom. Anything yeah. good usually comes from mom, right? But man, let me mention Paul and Kelly Caulfield watching their boys play on ESPNU and seeing them have just a great night combining on two separate goals. In the end, a great night to be a Badger. What a great night of college hockey on ESPNU. We hope we're back before the NCAA tournament. Frozen for in Pittsburgh for my boy Colby Cohen. I'm John Butcher Gus. Thanks for loving hockey. See you next time.